Hello, this is question 5 from 2009 Ordinary Level Leave Insert paper. You can find a link to the image of this question in the description below. But as you can see on the screen, it's made up of two parts, A and B. In part A, we're going to use the trapezoidal rule to find, to estimate, rather, estimate the area of this shape. And in part B, we're simply going to change the units of a number. I've done my best to copy the question out on the board, as you can see here. It's not the best, uh, some of these sizes are a bit off, but it should be good enough for what we need to do. I've also added in something that the question didn't give us, the trapezoid rule here. So I've wrote this out, it might not be fully familiar to what you know. I've taken this from the formula book, and the reason I took it from that is, I would like to point out, because some students don't seem to realise, this is in your formula book. You do not need to memorise the trapezoid rule. It is given to you, I will, I'll put it up on the screen actually, as I'm saying this, so you can see what page number it's on. The difference you might notice from what you learned in class would be, often teachers, instead of writing Y1 here, they might say first, and instead of YN, they might say last. Other than that, there's usually not other differences. Instead of these numbers, they'd often say everything else. But other than that, this should be, I feel, easy enough to remember. And in fact, you don't need to remember it. You just need to remember how to use it. Let me point out what some of the things are. H is a gap, is a regular interval. In this case, we will use these blocks here. Y is a height or of just the height of the entire shape. So the, for, the zero height, or oh, I'm sorry, I use a one here, the first height. The second height from here to here the third height from here to here, fourth height, and so on all the way down. Do not forget the last one and the first one. They can sometimes be zero, which they are going to be in this case. The last thing we need to know is how big these blocks are. So let me uh, draw the block out again here. And the question tells us it is one centimeter by 0 0.5 centimeters. That's good, except the question asks us to find the area in meters. So instead of using centimeters to start with, I find it much better to use at the start what you're going to finish with. That saves you converting at the end, which I see lots, I see students make more mistakes in the conversion than the rest of the part. Maybe that's not true, but still I see a lot of mistakes in the conversion. So they've told us what one centimeter is equal to. They tell us one centimeter is the same as three meters. Which means half a centimetre must be the same as one and a half metres. So let's forget this number here. Let's forget centimetres. We need centimetres to draw a picture. Yes, it needs to be smaller than reality because this was probably a field somewhere. But let's use the final numbers in our maths. We don't, it doesn't take up more space to write the numbers like this. So these are the ones we're going to use. This is how wide each of these blocks are. These are is how tall each of these blocks are. We can start now and fill in some of these uh, questions here. The area is approximately equal, because it's not exact, but it's good enough. Because this could be all wobbly lines in between here, could add or take away some areas. Okay, so what is H? H is the, the interval, the regular interval. And in this case, that'll be three meters. Three meters here. So let's put that in, three, and then divide by two, is, doesn't change. The first height, that's here, that's zero. It's not, there's no height at all to it. So that is zero. The last height, that's here. There's no height at all to it. That is also zero. If, if, you, if you do not use these as your first and last, your answer will be slightly wrong and you will lose marks for it. Okay, what's next? We have a plus, we have a two, we have a bracket. Just write down exactly what you have. Only replace the letters with things you know. Y2, the second height from here all the way up to here. How many, how many blocks is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten of those blocks. But we don't write ten in, we're writing the number. We didn't write one here for three. We write ten blocks is, uh, how high is ten blocks? Here it is here, I'm sorry. Uh, ten multiplied by 1.5. So let's, uh, yeah, let's just do it. We can do that in our head. Ten multiplied by 1.5 is 50. The next one, how many blocks high is this? Well, I won't bother counting it because it's one more and it's one more at the bottom. So it's two blocks more. So it's 12 
multiplied by 1.5. Which again, a lot of you should be able to do that in your head. If you can't, okay, use a calculator. Always double check with a calculator. So we get 18 there. The next height, this one's easy enough because it's the same as um, Y2. Y4 here is the same as Y2. So plus 15. Y5 is one less than Y4. One less here, so it's two less. It's two of these less. That's three less. Three meters less than this. It's 12. Or you could have got eight multiplied by 1.5. Would also be 12. Um, what's next? This guy is the same as this one. That's 15. This is the same as this one. That was 18. This is the same as a few of them there, which was 15. And we're finished. We've already done the last one. That's um, the last of every other one. That's, that's pretty much the work done. Uh, do not be afraid of how long or scary this is. Feel free to put it all into a calculator. I'd actually recommend putting into, I'd recommend doing it twice. Maybe try to do it slowly in your head, then do it in a calculator. Write your answer down, then do it on a calculator again. Because it's very easy to make mistakes in writing all that. But if you do not make a mistake, you should get out 324. That will give, get you full marks, but there's one thing I'd like to see. I teach physics as well, so I always like to see the units wrote down. Meters squared. I, I, unless they change something, I don't believe they take marks away in the maths exam for not writing the meters squared, but they do in science exams. So it's a good habit to get into. It also uh, can be dangerous in a question like this that was all about the units. If you didn't write it down, you might confuse yourself a little bit. All right, one last thing. If you didn't use the meters and just use centimeters, you would have got out, you would have done the same thing here and got out 36 centimeters squared. So how would you get from this answer to this answer here? You would need to notice that it is three times bigger. Three times bigger. So should your answer be three times bigger? Not quite. It was three times bigger in one direction and three times bigger in another direction. That means our answer is going to be nine times bigger. So if you just multiply this by nine, you will get 324. So that's how you could have started in centimeters. But I do find if a question asks for meters, start in meters. Even if they give you centimeters, just on a separate note, if they told you something was four centimeters and they asked for the answer in meters, well, I would not use four centimeters. I would use 0 0.04 um, meters. It will a bit, it's a bit more awkward to start with, but it will help you at the end, I think. That's just my personal opinion. Okay, let's, let me rub this out and we'll do part B. Okay, part B says Nula can walk at a speed of 1.6 meters per second. So let's write in that uh, unit, meter per second, because I'm going to use that information to help me. Write your speed in kilometers per hour. This is often, um, some students could just do this nice simply, they can think in their head of how to change this easy. Others can't. So how do you teach it? Here is a way I've taught, I found to be quite successful to teach it. I keep the units here. I use the units for information. So let me write this out one more time here. 1.6 meters per second. That's what that line means. It's divide by, and that's what, it, it actually doesn't use either of these. But it says per second. Per second is actually divided by second. Meter divided by seconds. Uh, distance divided by time. So we would like to change this into kilometers per um, hours. So we, would we don't want meters there, we want kilometers. Or another way to say that is I want a thousand. Multiply the meters by a thousand. So, but if I multiply something by a thousand, I'd better divide something by a thousand. This is all one term. This is all, all of these are multiplying and dividing, making them all one term, they're all connected. If I multiply the top, I better divide the top. That means I haven't changed anything. A thousand divided by a thousand is one. I haven't changed anything. I'd like to change seconds. How do we change that into hours? If I multiply it by 60, I will get to hours. Multiply the bottom, I better multiply the top. 
uh, sorry, 60 will get me to minutes. I said hours, did I? It'll get me to minutes. Not quite enough. I need um, to get to hours. So I need to multiply it by another 60. That will get me to hours. I multiply the bottom again. Oh, I better multiply the top again. There, I've been fair and balanced. These numbers will all come out to be the same now. I can never, I can't just go around multiplying things without balancing it out somewhere. Anyway, let's, let's uh, do this out. I have the numbers right here. This will come out on this side to be 5,760 divided by 8,000. 1,000 multiplied by meters. Well, that's just kilometers. That's why we did it. That's, what a ki that's actually what the K means, by the way. Kilo is, is um, some Latin. Latin or Roman, maybe, for a thousand. Seconds multiplied by 60 is minutes. Minutes multiplied by 60 is hours. That's, they wanted our answer in kilometers per hour. So we've done it. Except, let's clean this up a little bit. Divide by a thousand. Well, that's easy. We just move the decimal place three times. Or do it on a calculator. 5.760. Well, we don't need to write the zero. Um, kilometers per hour. And that's the final answer. That was a relatively short if you can do it, but annoying if you can't. One, a few bits of advice I'll give. Try and use your common sense. In the exam, they will often give you things that make sense in your head. A meter per second. You know roughly how fast you walk. You should know roughly what a meter is. Okay, I cover that in a second. All right. You probably be used to how fast a car goes. 30 kilometers, 40, 50, 60 kilometers an hour. So this would make sense, this number for walking. A lot slower than a car, but um, so not crazy big or not crazy small. It, these numbers, you try and, try and, I say you should, but try to use your intuition to check your answer. If your answer came, for, for example, if your answer came out as um, 109 kilometers per hour, do not just leave that as an answer, because this is clearly wrong. You know it's wrong if you use your common sense a little. You could not have been walking 109 kilometers an hour. All right, so lots of students make little mistakes, which is understandable. Maybe they forget to um, divide by an extra six or multiply by an extra 60, and their answer comes out as 0 point, um, 0 0.1 kilometers per hour or something like that. Again, this is way too slow. This would be harder one to guess. Still, use your intuition to try and check your answer as best you can. All right, well, that's the answer to those questions. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. I will get back to you as soon as I can. And until next time, have a good day.